Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, but you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you're tuning in. Right. I'm joined by Rico today, my pal from London, who co-founded Porky's Corner with me in 2017. How are you doing, More Rico? Three years ago next week, isn't it? 27th yeah. of November, first video. Been a long three years. I guess it was the first video you had to Hobbs in Dennis's office, right? No, next door, my office. In Your office. Room, sort of thing. Yeah, his, his office is at bottom. Yeah. That's and I had Chris Smedley stood behind camera <laughs> trying to put me off and Liam and then I interviewed that Asim Nasser and yes. then after and he was saying that him and his brothers were going to be pound for pound and this and that and that's all good positive stuff isn't it when you're turning pro and then he got beat in his first fight didn't he mm -hmm. with Ryan he Rhodes is his trainer and the second interview well Liam I think he just won Commonwealth then so, yeah. yeah, so that's a long time ago, isn't it? And after, I thought, God, how, how crap were I? And I remember you you uploaded it, didn't you? <laughs> I, yeah, I used to upload some of the videos for you, do some editing, but... I had a black T-shirt on dinner that said Animal on it. <laughs> about five well, back stars. In, well, back in those days, you used to be sitting in the shed, do you remember? Yeah, if I did any the old place. Place. In the shed, yeah, yeah. I just felt that I could get more done at home then. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But... Uh, Cause you know what boxers are like. If they come in and don't they, and just have a crack with you, don't they, and take piss. <laughs> but, yeah. But they're all good people. Shout out to Chris Smedley. Hope you're well, Chris. I know you're watching. Keep on. Yeah, fighting. Chris is a good guy. I like Chris. I want. Can I just touch on something that Liam Cameron sent me? Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Of course. The, it looks like you kind of have changed everything now regarding uh, drug bans. If you get done. Uh, uh, UCAD spoken to them maximum is three months from January new six year update so Liam you need to work on your spellings but uh, yeah, my, so my ban will stay the same unless I get a legal team he says so I think it's a bit I don't know. Maybe Terry but maybe able to elaborate more on that than us. He's a bit more adverse in all that, isn't he? But I just think that they made an example of him, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Uh, and it's a good point that he makes about investing in legal stuff because that, what it really requires is fighters to invest a lot in lawyers. And are you going to make that money back during your career? Probably no. not. If you have that money and you're Tyson Fury, you can fight it and you can drain funds out of UCAD. But they know that somebody like Liam, who now works in construction, right? Yeah. Is he going to be spending another 20 grand to get himself back in the ring because he doesn't even have a promoter who's going to touch him? It's a tricky one, isn't it? They just they can just put a black marker against your name and then you're going to have to go through the courts and spend all this money trying to get it back. I think he's a roofer, Liam. Gone back roofing. After all that effort he put in, he got into a good position, wheel rank number 12 with IBF. And then then that happens. I just, I'm gutted for him. I'm gutted for him. Whether he's guilty or not, he says he's not guilty. He's come back as cocaine on it, right? So that's yeah. what we have to go on. We can't say. Traces. We can't Minimum say he's crazy. our pal, can we? And he's not guilty. He says he's not guilty. Got traces on it on him on it. He's either handled money from certain individuals that have given him money because it was that minute the traces, or he's took it and he so it's one or other in it. So only he knows. But yeah, I think you were harsh. They offered him an eighteen month ban to go guilty, and I think he'd he'd, he'd done it. It had been going on six months, so he would have only had another year. In hindsight, if he would would have known about this pandemic, he would have took that money, but I don't think he wanted to admit his guilt. I don't know. Maybe maybe he hadn't took it. Maybe he might have handled some of that's that's I don't know. It's hard to say. I think regardless, the uh, punishment doesn't fit the crime. So you have Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't fit the crime. So you have like Dillian White, you can go B samples go missing. 
you've got Tyson Fury, you've got so many fighters, right, that have some sort of performance-enhancing substance. I mean, cocaine is not a performance-enhancing substance, so, it, you know, performance-enhancing substances, you can get less bans than for recreational drugs, which is just bizarre. Because you're damaging, effectively, as a fighter, you're not getting any advantage, whereas others have advantages from performance-enhancing drugs, and then they also have, it creates lasting advantages. So you might stop taking growth hormones, but you'll still see the benefits in two, three years' time, even when it's out of your system. Yeah. I just feel that it's sad. And obviously, Dennis lost his investment, didn't he? Mm Mm-hmm. Afternoon, Dennis. I know you're watching. Yeah, Dennis has lost his dough that he's got in him. And Chris has come out of sport for two and a half years. Yeah. But he's back with a new gym now, Chris Smedley in Sheffield. And he's got some good prospects. So Good. He's one of the best amateur well. trainers in the country. One of them, yeah. He's been at it 25 years, hasn't he? Same as Mick Whale. Turned out ABA champions, Chris. You know what's funny? You know, Mick Whale and Chris Smedley, good close pals of mine, but they don't arse lick. You don't see them hanging out at the back of anybody, and I like that. I like that in people. They don't have an agenda. For example, last night, I'm sat here, I'm watching Sky. Four tweets came up from Tony Bellew during the show. Why are these tweets only allowed on there, his opinion? Why is his opinion loud and nobody else's? Is it because he went in the bubble and he's trying to protect project himself into that position to, to still be thought about and because he's supposed to be going to disappear on he? yeah i mean he was supposed to retire and disappear because he didn't like fame and all this nonsense but he, i think he wants to still feel as a part of boxing and you know a lot of boxers when they retire it's hard for them to let go and just not do anything because once they do that what are they you know, boxers. are they relevant anymore? They're just ex boxers, isn't they? Well, look at Clinton Woods. He went, he went from air, there were no English belt then, he went area, British Commonwealth, European, world champion over three years, been in with best of the best in that era. And you don't see Clinton putting out tweets on, on there, do you? I saw Ryan Rhodes' tweets pop up again yesterday. Uh, but Ryan's in the business, isn't he? But, He's not as bad as Tony Bellew, is he? For no, a... I think partly for some trainers, why is is it's sort of like free marketing for them. So they'll tweet their opinions. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. And they always say positives about fighters, right? So they'll say, okay, comes up on Sky Sports, and then somebody goes, oh, you know what? This trainer or this person in boxing said something nice about you. You should get in touch with them. Why and can't they're probably they sliding the in the comments. DMs as well. <laughs> why can't they put the fans' comments up there? I don't know. I mean, even if I mean they select the comments, so they should shouldn't it all be about putting the fans' comments up so you get some yeah. views of what people think casuals probably, but still. If I could get on Twitter, I'd put some up there. They won't put it on there where I fucking think. No. <laughs> and he might have a few spelling mistakes as well. Yeah, it might just say bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> All right, then. Moving on from uh, the adventures of Tintin, Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man. Uh, Funding, Rico. Before we set about Eddie's show last night, let's talk about funding, because there's there's different versions of it. I've heard some of lads on Asylum's version, and I'm going to hear your version, because I'm I'm not adverse in it. What, What do you think about it all, Rico? So... Just to take a step back, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday, the government announced a 300 million sports winter fund survival package. So the idea was that to help spectator sports in the UK survive through the pandemic. Yeah. So the money, how the money was distributed was that they gave a lot of the funding to rugby union, um, horse racing, Football, so some of the lower tiers, not the Premier League, to help these clubs survive. Rugby League got some money, motorsports, even greyhound racing and badminton. So a lot of people on Twitter kicked up a big fuss about it and said that, you know, it's unfair that boxing didn't get any funding. It's a disgrace. 
so forth, so forth. But when you actually look at this government press release about what it is, so the funding package is mainly comprises of loans and they were given to the bodies that applied for these um, grants or loans. There's also another stream of funding, which is sort of a small business loan for sports clubs and leisure clubs, which amateur clubs can apply for to get funding to get through the pandemic. So this is effectively the government saying, we're going to give you 300 million pounds as loans for these governing bodies that will then distribute the money fairly across day sports. And so the first thing is boxing associations should off put in an application and a plan on what, how they're going to spend the money. And based on that, it would have been reviewed by an independent assessor who would have then looked at this plan and said, OK, that's fair. It makes sense. I can distribute this. So after this came out, a lot of people kicked up a fuss and the British Boxing Board of Control said, this is a disgrace. We didn't get any money. And you had lots of people talking about like Luke Campbell saying he wants to meet the government to discuss this. And, you know, Eddie Hearn's being asked about it and Bean and everybody else in boxing. If we really break it down quite simply, what is British boxing, right? British boxing is the amateur association, British Boxing Board of Control, um, Bieber, which is another organization which puts on fights. Alliance Amateur. Alliance Amateur, all of these different bodies. Box, uh, GB England. Yeah, but they all have different goals and they all have different views, right? So there's no collective single body in boxing in this country that can say, we will lobby the government on behalf of boxing as a whole to get this money. So effectively what they would have had to do is get every single body in boxing to put in an application. But from what I gather, not a single one of these bodies put in an application. So they're all crying over spilled milk. It's all well and good that boxing, boxers and others feel that it was unfair, but there is a process of how you get this money. It's a fairly simple process. They should have been included enough to know that this is coming, put in a little plan about how they're going to spend the money that the government can assess. And it should have been British Boxing Board of Control. It should have been them in particular and the Amateur Boxing Association that should have looked at this ahead and said to everybody else, let's work together to put something for boxing. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two is how do you distribute the money in boxing? This is to get spectator sports. This is not to get amateur clubs. This is to get spectator sports. Does that money go to Matchroom? Does that money go to Queensbury? Does that money, money go to Dennis and, you know, Steve Wood and Steve Goodwin? I don't but think then, Dennis oh, and Steve Goodwin and Steve Wood need any, any loan. Yeah, exactly. But then when you start looking at it, what is, how do boxers make their money? They make their money by fighting on shows. They don't some fixed salaries. Yeah. What are the costs for small hall promoters of running? You know, what are they ongoing costs? None, right? They don't have any costs at the moment. They're not running shows. There's no cost attached to it. Yes, boxers aren't fighting. But ultimately, it's your choice as a boxer if you want to be a professional boxer. If you are a professional boxer, then you should have enough sponsors and other things to keep you going. Otherwise, you just get a job in between this period. Nobody's saying because I want to be a professional. If I want to be a professional boxer... I shouldn't be entitled to taxpayers' money. I mean, how does this all work? That just because you want to be a professional boxer, you should be getting a government loan to tidy over. It doesn't work that way, number one. Number two, if the board and these other bodies can't get together to come up with a plan of how you spend money in boxing in a fair and equitable way, why should the government be giving out loans and taxpayer money to them? It's just ineptitude. There's no common goal in boxing where people can come together and say, this is what's advanced at the sport. Can you trust the board, your friends at the board? Can you trust them to distribute the money equally? We'll probably have Frank Warren. Can you imagine them with some money from this? Where did it all go? And it's also a loan. It needs to be paid back. Boxing's in a tight margin. You can't be paying back loans with interest on top of what these shows are making. They go bankrupt. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they've not given it. Yeah, and they would have they would have applied for it. They would well, have asked for something because they can't help themselves, can they? I don't think they did because they said oh. they're gonna look into this. And my I I just don't think they actually have their ducks in a row or they know what's going on. They so 
inwardly looking that they don't know anything beyond the bubble of boxing. They have no understanding and they have no interest and they don't engage with anybody. That's why boxing isn't getting money and badminton and ice hockey are. You know who is running the show, don't you now? It border control. Two particular promoters in the country, not mentioning the names. They're, 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 they're having to say now what's going on, aren't they? Because without mm-hmm. them, the border irrelevant, aren't they, at the moment? They need to keep them happy, don't they? Warren and Earn. Yes. Oh, they've got to but, keep them Warren, Warren and Earn happy. They're running the show. I'm not saying they're dictating, but the board are now on the back foot, aren't they? Do you remember when they were yeah. on front foot, when they said to Frank Warren, no, we're not sanctioning Hay against uh, Chisora because of violence around it. We're not sanctioning that. So Frank went, OK, on the back four. He went and got a Luxembourg licence. Then they welcomed him back, didn't they? Yeah. But they, now I think that they're really on the back foot because if Frank Warren and Eddie Earn pull the plug on boxing until the pandemic's over, the board are irrelevant. All their little perks has gone on it. Yeah, exactly. But you look at, um, let's look at Greyhound. That's a £1 million. Ice hockey, £4 million. Tennis, £5 million. You, they aren't actually running events, right? They're not running. You can't. There's no televised tennis British Lawn Association. There's no Greyhound. There's no badminton because they, they rely on spectator money. Boxing has proven through this pandemic, at least the top level promoters, that they can run shows without a crowd. Do they need the money? Does does Eddie Hearn and Frank, do they actually need the money, if you think about it, objectively? No, they're both multi-millionaires, aren't they? They don't need the money, but they want, they're want they winners, aren't they, in life, you could say. Couldn't you? Eddie and Frank are both winners, even though Eddie's had it good. They're yeah. winners, aren't they? They like to win. Maybe a narcissist. I know Eddie is, isn't he? Yeah, he's relentless as well. Oh, he's <laughs> relentless. He's that relentless. He couldn't get Dave Allen Lovejoy on. <laughs> but, but you think about it. Eddie Hearn, his money, why he can run this is he pays the fighters whatever is left in the pot, right? So you don't need this to keep the sports going. These other sports actually yeah. needed to keep it going. And also, Eddie Hearn's making... Look, you're not going to tell me that Eddie and Frank are running these shows at a loss at the moment. No way. Yeah. Not telling them what? That they're going to be losing money on these shows that they currently they're running. making money. They're just on, they're paying everybody chump change, saying, "Look, this is where we're at. This is what you're getting. If you don't want to fight, others do want to fight." And people are just saying, "Yes, Eddie. Yes, Frank." And that's probably what they want to do. That they're still going to keep their TV money. Yeah, they're just going to they're they're taking a hit on what they're making, and fighters are they're still juggling the numbers about. Exactly. So they're still making, otherwise they won't be putting them on. They won't put shows on. They wait, they park up. They're not daft, it's a business. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah. All right, just to, yeah, just to what? sum it up, I mean, look, their boxing can't come together to come up with a plan how to get money for the sports. Therefore, boxing didn't get any money. So I don't think there should be any outrage. They didn't put in any sort of proposal of this. And the other thing is, boxers, most of them shouldn't be professional. So why do they need money? And there's government money's loans they can't pay back. Yeah. Simple as that. I, I have no sympathy for boxing not getting money. There's other ways how amateur clubs can get money by applying to other schemes. Um, and they should do that. Um, but, this is, but this shouldn't be a moment of outrage. If anything, it just proves how badly run boxing is in this country. Yeah, all right, then moving on. Let me just give a shout out to Nick Manners, Jim in Leeds. How are you doing, Nick? Hope you're well. Hope your gym's open soon. Right. 25 quid pay per view. We've all, we've all seen the Rob Tebbett interview, and he only, he only got stuck into Bean because me and Terry have been digging Rob Tebbett out. Because when he gets him on hook, he lets him off, Rob, doesn't it? But he didn't let Bean off yesterday. He kept coming back at him, didn't he? He kept him there yeah. 55 minutes. So, Rob Tebbert, I tip my hat off to you. But you'll be very quiet like a mouse now, probably. But now that you've set about Bean, Rob, why don't you grow some even bigger balls and set about Hearn or 
aka Eddie Hills, the 4 0 super heavyweight amateur star. Three by way of. <laughs> but go on then, what do you think about Bean's uh, interview with Rob Tebbett, Rico? Yeah, you know, I, I need to give a lot of credit to Rob and I did yesterday on Twitter. I think he did a good job, and that's what you really want, right? You don't want to say it's pay per view because we can't have fun fights in a pandemic. I think Rob's point was very apt where he said that, well, you're getting the money off working class people that are struggling in the middle of a pandemic. I don't think Bean really had a proper answer to it. He just, he felt like everybody's attacking Sky and he tried to deflect by talking about international fights. But the reality is they are just milking working class people to try and get some extra money for these AJ fights. Nobody said that AJ has to fight this year. Nobody... They could have put the fight in Saudi. They could have had other options. AJ's such a big name in sports that you could just take him to the Middle East and he could fight there. I don't think it, we had to have that fight in the UK. Nobody said we must fight. AJ must fight in the UK. Yeah. Uh, where, my, where I have a problem with it, Eddie um, said that the Saudi fight would have won off it with the equivalent of a rumble in the jungle and it had to be 25 quid. But who broke the news that it was going to be 25 quid? Big P here, the voice of hardcore boxing. There you go. <laughs> and I just looked at it and I thought, that's where the, that's where it's going to go. And this is how I look at it. That won't rumble in the jungle, were it, that Saudi show, because you yeah, have people was, like was, Tom was. Little on there who were getting 0.01% of what Joshua were getting, fighting a guy who would probably batter Andy Ruiz if they fought that night. Am I correct? Yeah. So Tom Little were thrown under the bus for the price of a Ford Mondeo brand new and Joshua walked away with 80 million and they did a camp together at EIS. So that's Anthony Joshua, the person that just keeps giving. 25 quid, you know why that is? That's because they know Joshua's still going to want paying. That fight didn't have to be 25 quid and the reason is this, usually, right, the promoter pays for the venue yeah. which is a big cost, and then the rights are sold. <clears throat> they got money, a side fee like you do in the US from casinos, which would have paid a lot of the purse. Yeah, And from what I gather, the TV rights were quite cheap anyway Very for cheap. Sky. Very so cheap. Sky got that. So I think it was more mainly a cash grab from Sky, but that was the beginning of Joshua being 25 quid. And you know what's going to happen next? everything's going to start creeping up a bit. 25%, that, that was the increase last time. So we're going to have more fights on 25 foot. And this pandemic will be used as an excuse to say, we cannot make these fights. So, you know, boxing is still recovering. And the new norm for pay-per-views will be 25 quid in the UK. So if that's when, 25 quid, Rico, right, uh, what would Fury Joshua be? Uh, I reckon they might make it 40, 50 quid and say, you know, BT needs money, Sky needs money. I don't, I don't really have a problem with Fury Joshua being 30, 40 quid. I mean, it's not ideal. I don't, I don't really have a problem with it. But Trolling me with that, really. I have is, yeah, but the problem I have is, which Rob pointed out quite well in the interview yesterday, is that to get the standard shows, which tend to be quite poor, you have to still pay your Sky subscription unless you know how to stream like most grown-ups. You have to pay your Sky subscription, which is 45, 50 quid a month. And then on top of that, you're spending north of 100 quid a year on pay-per-views on top. So you, so the cost of actually watching just skyboxing in a year easily is by seven, 800 quid. Yes, you get the football and Formula One and what else, but it, I think Rob made a good point when he said, look, Showtime is a lot cheaper in the US just to have Showtime, the basic package, and then buying the pay-per-views. It's the same with um, one of the points I don't think Rob made, but you look at ESPN, right? ESPN Plus, they just had, that's $5 a month. They just had Lomachenko against Teofimo Lopez on a $5 a month app. You can't get that in the UK. They, they would have put that on pay-per-view. I mean, it was on pay-per-view on another platform, but in the UK, even the foreign fights end up on pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Moving on, then. Uh, let's have a look what we've got. Uh, 
go on like this. Uh, I just want to get this in about Bean because he annoys me, Bean. He, last night, he, it's becoming every time he comes on, I tell you, I just see him. and He can make a fight that he's watching turn into like a cooking programme, can't he? Added spice, Matt! And sizzling and bubbling and all this. And, and, and then, that, so he goes from being a chef and he turns into like a banker. Those punches to the body will be a good investment for later. He's like a financial advisor or a fucking chef, isn't it? He? He's annoying me, Rico. What do you think? Yeah, he likes to use the word blender as well. Uh, yeah, he's, well he's a blender, isn't he? All right. He's yeah. the right wheel. But uh, he's starting to annoy me, Rico, more than Bell. What do you mean starting? You've been annoyed about Bean since day one. <laughs> not like Bean. He just... You know, when it comes out about him, people are going to kneel before me, mate. They're going to kneel before me and say, Porky, you was right. I said, no, I could run around here. I'll, you know, when it comes out about him, I'll tell everybody. And you know, when they see me approaching him, even in shops, you know, in, in village and stuff like that, They'll go, oh, God, he's here. And I'll say, I told you, then I told you. They'll go, you was right, Porky, okay. But I just, listen, mate, you know, and get me a mini digger and let me go to his garden and dig them up. <laughs> you know what? I, I must admit, I don't think Bean was yesterday as bad as he usually is. And that's because no. When he doesn't need to hype people like Katie Taylor, the amount of hype they had around Katie Taylor, then he's a bit better, more measured, but he still is quite elaborate in his explanations of things. But yeah, I don't think he was as bad yesterday. Last weekend, Bean and Macklem were, yeah, they were just awful. They were all, you know, all fanning Katie Taylor like nothing else. Matthew Macklin said in the space of three and a half minutes that she were an icon four times. He also did say that she's the most liked sports person in the world, which what? I, think, I think more people than people in the UK and Ireland would need to know her for her to be the most liked sports person in the world. What about Darren Barker putting her on a Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods level? What yeah. What's happened to him? <laughs> Darren Barker. I mean, is he trying to? Is he out at cult? Is he on outside looking in? <laughs> do you think? Do you think? Uh, do you think being in that bubble makes everybody become bean masons? Yeah, yeah. Well, what it is when you when beans in the bubble, if you need any bean powder, you've got to go see Darren Barker because <laughs> <laughs> bean can't serve you up front bubble, can he? Yeah, and I guess the the side effects are company man syndrome. Company man syndrome, you've got it, mate. That's the Bean Masons. Uh, well, when we're speaking about Katie Taylor, we can talk about this two million views, oh, which was oh. mentioned yesterday. Across how many platforms? Seven. So let's break it down. Um, 1.5 million views on Facebook. Yeah, but it, it was 83,000 83, on YouTube, wasn't it? Uh, it was, let's see. Guy Sport, uh, 550,000 on YouTube. Yeah, but it was 83,000, wasn't it, going into the Sky show as it went over to Sky? Yeah, but let's what talk do about... What do people do then? Do they stay on YouTube or do they tune into the Sky? I have no idea because obviously Sky show needs to be... You need to be a Sky subscriber. Uh, YouTube is free. Uh, Facebook is free. Sky Sports app is just a digital version of Sky. So actually, when you look at YouTube, 1.5 million views. For me to be counting as somebody that views a video on YouTube, I need to watch it for three seconds. So that includes me scrolling down on my phone, looking at what it is on the autoplay and going, okay, that's interesting and moving on to something else, right? Yeah. That's 1.5 million views. It's not like, it's not captured audience. So they did look at things like how many actually looked at the main event? They're just talking about the show and how many actually stayed for longer than, let's say, three minutes. Then YouTube, 550K. I think you just need to watch it again for a few minutes, maybe yeah. a minute. And then you're thinking about Sky Sports TV platform and website. Sky Sports also includes Ireland, right? Yeah. So, of course, people in Ireland are going to be some Sky Sports. So, the numbers 
in itself. They're not bad, but also don't make out like there's 2 million views is 2 million people in the UK actively watching the show. Yeah. So basically, the 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 the, the, the fudging numbers, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they're making out to be a bigger star than she is, um, which is just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. All right, then moving on from her, because she, she's not my cup of tea. Uh, uh, a Sky in Trouble. I noticed that Bean interview with Rob Tebbett, the hardcore's hardcore, he, that he is known as. Uh, I noticed the, the, the interview with him on, on whatever the Sky show, match on show, Rob Tebbett and Bean. Bean said... Uh, there's, we're, we're not. Uh, I want all these fights. It's like uh, uh, loads of sweets and a sweet, John. You want every sweet, but we just can't do it. There was a time where they did do it, and to be fair, they have back boxing for thirty years, aren't they? But I've just got a feeling that maybe the money ain't there no more for them to go get these fights. Or is the does Eddie uh, not get as much money out of job if they buy stuff in as he would be putting his stuff on? Is it because Eddie's not involved? So he likes to have a say in everything, doesn't he? He tried to hijack that WBSS thing with Calla, didn't he? Yes. And then he nearly ended up at it because Eddie was trying to put his spoke into that. He tried to put his spoke into the Fury Klitschko first fight, didn't he? Turning up mm-hmm. at the presser. And they said, all the promoters uh, come come to the front and the fighters and that for a photograph. So they were Burnt Bont, Big, Big Mick, Peter Fury, Tyson Fury, and Eddie Earning and Adam Smith inserted themselves into it. So Tyson's fury said, here, what are you doing, Eddie Earn? You shouldn't be in this photo. No, to do with you, this. And he sort of slinked off, didn't he? So do you feel that Eddie tries to project himself into anything that's going on to make yeah, it I, about him? Yeah, of course he does. I mean, he wants to keep this idea for the casual market that anything that happens in British boxing that's positive, he's involved in. And so to your he, first... Go on, sorry. sorry. You, so your first you, question about our Sky in Trouble. Yeah, yeah the Sky mean, in Trouble, yeah. I think they've cut their boxing budget. I mean, they've looked at the numbers and said the Masters last weekend in golf probably generated more money. I mean, boxing's an expensive sport to run. Yeah. I do I do take Bean's point about, um, yes, putting on a 2 a.m. fight in the U.S. doesn't get a great amount of viewers, but <laughs> you're telling me that Tank Davis against Santa Cruz was going to be expensive in terms of right fees i don't believe that that's a good no. show that's a good show and also you own the rights to have it on replay they obviously for eddie right when he puts on a show for sky exclusively for sky sky can sell the rights of that show to the zone or well eddie has his own deal with the zone but other networks in other countries wherever that might be so Eddie makes more money. So I think Eddie wants them to focus on the UK shows. You'll go to Bean. We're trying to build the next generation of fighters. Therefore, we should only focus on that. We shouldn't be showing US fighters. That's taking money out of the purse. I, I don't think the pandemic has made this happen. We actually saw this happen before the pandemic, right? Last year, we didn't get many US shows outside of what the zone had in the US. Yeah. So we so that's the only thing they're really focusing on. Maybe it's because boxing is dying sports. Maybe it's because they just don't want to spend any more money on stuff that doesn't get views outside of hardcore boxing fans. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just feel that maybe there just might not be money there no more. And like as like I've just said to you there, Eddie wants to make everything about him, doesn't he? There's a reason why they're not putting fights on like Kelbrook Crawford. And Lomachenko Lopez, and there's other fights that have not not been going on. There's a reason why they don't want to do that. They might have agendas. They might all be on bonus schemes. It might not benefit them financially if they're yeah. buying stuff in from America. Custom. I don't know what it is, but there's something going on, isn't there? I don't want to be sound like a conspiracist guy or like that. Although I do do like a good conspiracy program on YouTube, mm. but. Uh, I just feel that it's wrong that nobody's put, and, and BT aren't buying them, are they? As well, have they no. got no money either? There is, there is another angle to this, which is um, the owner of Showtime is the same owner as the owner of Channel Four. That's why Channel Four showed the um, tank against Leo Santa Cruz. <coughs> Maybe they feel with some of these PBC PBC shows on Showtime 
that by putting them on and paying for them, they're actually funding a competitor in one way or another. So that might be the other thing. But also, I think boxing has slipped down the agenda. I mean, they promoting netball, female football has been more promoted than boxing these days on Sky. They clearly aren't invested in boxing like they used to be. And that's why what will come out of the contract negotiations between Matchroom and Sky and other promoters in 2021 will be quite telling where Sky is with boxing. Are they going to have the same amount of shows? Yeah. Will they have more pay-per-views? What way is it going? Yeah. Exciting times, not ahead. But that's why we love boxing. That's why we love boxing, Matt. That's why I love hanging around all you cool people, because I'm so uncool. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> Bean definitely didn't get onto a cool table at school where no, all the no, cool kids... Yeah. He was, sat at, he was sat at front of the spot. No. He was sat in the corner with his dictaphone. <laughs> yeah, walking. What about when he, when he, when he, I know, I know I always bring this up, but when he did that interview and, he, and a few years back and he said he got a dictaphone one Christmas, one of his presents, where most people got a rally grifter, <laughs> rally grifter or an Astro Wars. And he, he said he, he used to practice in the school playground. He's dictaphone and rehearsing fights that he'd seen on TV, like down goes Frazier, down goes Frazier, you know, stuff like that. And this is why I, I, I can't get my head around it why they'd have somebody like that at Sky. That's gimp behavior, isn't it? Can you imagine <laughs> him walking around Edlington Comprehensive, right, where I'm from? Back in the 80s, well, I went up there in 83 September. With his dictaphone, I would have gone, come here, you, with that dictaphone. What is it? <laughs> uh, you'd think you were bugging all class, wouldn't you, also? Could you imagine him walking around with a dictaphone? Because you do laps around school, don't you, in ble- at dinner time, but break time and that. He'd be walking around with his little gimp crew, or probably on his own, with his dictaphone, mate. He was probably wearing a suit back then as well. Listen, mate, all people I know know him, they all think he's a dick. But they're not going to send out when it's because he's got a bit of pull, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. That's Beating how the world up, works, my friend. Laptop in. <laughs> right, moving on from bean powder. Uh, we've covered Rob Tebbert. AJ Fury won't happen next year. It doesn't look like it, does it? Mm-hmm. No. Nope. Uh, AJ's homecoming. They keep going on about this homecoming with Paul F, right? He went to New York by his own accord, didn't he? Yes. He went to Saudi by his own accord, didn't he? Yes. Before those fights, what did he say in the ring after the Povetkin fight? He said he wanted to stay in UK, didn't he, for his fans. It is didn't about- they put out? Didn't they put out that tweet a couple of years ago that AJ signs with Wembley and he's going to stay in the UK for his next five fights? Yeah. And they were drumming up all the stuff that you know what, we've got the world champion, wants him to fight in British in front of British crowds and fans. And This is where like... it's at, Great Britain and all that. So then you've got Sadiq Khan giving him an OBE on top of his MBE for all that. Now they're tipping him for a knighthood like Lewis Hamilton. And yet, then it, so, he's, so he gets his OBE and then he goes and fights New York, Saudi. And yet they're still tipping him for a knighthood. This guy does not give a hoot about Britain. He is a taker. He's here to take, mate. That's a yeah. man. Yeah, but you know what? I'll, I'll give the other side. Boxing's a short career. He should maximise his income. But I don't think he has ever said himself necessarily that he's going to fight here only. It's more the people around him. So Eddie Hearn and everybody else making this big point about him fighting here and caring about the fans. I think he'll fight wherever the money is. And, you know, Lennox Lewis did that and others. And I think it's fair enough, but we shouldn't be fed this narrative that he's here. And it's not a homecoming when there's no fans. Yeah, homecoming. Yeah, but it's an extra fiver. Yeah. And he's fighting a guy who's 40 in a few months. Any pool left turns 40, doesn't he, at New Year? He does, he does. 40-year-old old man. He's only been beat once by Vladimir Klitschko and he beat Yui Fury. Yui got cut in round two. Uh, ben Davidson is rimming Wilder on what on IFL, rimming him uh, on a massive scale. I did a video in February and I got loads of crap for it. Okay, Ben, ben Davidson won't train Wilder. Well, 
Now look, he's with Sugar Hill. Ben Davidson's on outside looking in, and he's bigging Wilder up. Who called it? Who said Wilder be trained by Ben Davidson in his next fight? It's still looking good, the prediction. What do you think, Rico? Yeah, but I, I mean, we've seen crazier things happen in boxing, right? What, like Frank um, Maloney turn into a woman? Well, not as crazy as that, but still crazy thing. Um, we, um, yeah, I I don't know. I mean, does Wilder think he needs Ben Davidson? Does he rate Fury? I, I think the biggest problem is not necessarily Ben Davidson trying to get in there. It's more that I don't think Wilder necessarily wants to admit that he needs help from Fury's corner or anybody that's been in Fury's corner to become a champion or beat Fury. But it would be quite a good mind game thing to get um, uh, Ben, Fury, Davidson, on ben Davidson in there. But what happened to... He knows and, Fury, doesn't he? Yeah, but what happened to his and Fury's great friendship where they text each other all the time, if that's the case? On outside looking in, mate. Money talks. Yeah. And he also has Josh Taylor, so... Yeah, 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 but Josh Taylor's not wilder, is he? No, but I mean, in terms of how camps and dates work, that might yeah. be a thing. Oh, that... I can assure you, if he gets offered wilder fight for Fury, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be good for PR, won't it? Our Fury's ex-trainers training wilder and this and that and blah de blah, and it'll get a UK interest in. Oh, they're all the. Look, the, the scripts are being written, aren't they? What's Ben Davidson's best win as a trainer? Billy Joe winning 168 pound belt against a nobody. Yeah. That's it. Josh exactly. Taylor just fought somebody Dennis nearly signed. I don't know. Josh Taylor seems, uh, sorry, Ben Davidson seems to come out of nowhere talking a good game on Instagram and Twitter and. YouTube, doesn't he? He's still, he's, he still looks like he should be at school, shouldn't he? He's only a babby, isn't he? Maybe he might be a great trainer down the line, but talking a good game seems to get you in it mixed nowadays, doesn't it? I mean, for example, Dominic Ingle, he's another one who gets himself out there self-promoter, but would he have any fighters if his second name weren't Ingle? I don't think he would. No. Would Shane McGuigan get a second look if his dad weren't Baza? He wouldn't have initially. I don't think Shane's a bad trainer at all. I, I don't either. I just I, think that he's got a leg up due to that, right? You've got Carl Frampton, uh, all these other kids coming through, and they were effectively, Carl Frampton was put into Shane McGuigan's lap and that helped him build his name. But I think with Shane, actually, he's, he has grasped the opportunity when it's come to the fighters he's had. He's done a good job with a lot of them. So whether that be George Groves or... Carl Frampton, he's, he's done a decent job with them. So I can't knock him on that. But that is boxing, right? It's not... If Chris Smedley was given Carl Frampton and George Groves, he could have done a good job with them. It's not necessarily about how good of a trainer you are. It's about what, where your opportunities and law boxing trainers realise that actually being an IFL and hanging off the back of fighters and being in commentary and TV, that's a good way to get, it, get yourself out there. You know, Chris Smedley is best trainer in country. Josh Wales second, and I've got Shane as third. Mark Tibbs fourth. Peter Fury fifth, because he's, he's not as active as others. Uh, who else? That I like that. I forgot his name again. The Manchester kid. Is he uh, Arun or something? I forget his name. A, a Manchester kid. I mentioned him before, and I keep forgetting his name. Arun Edley or something, is it? Yeah. Something like that. I think he's a good trainer as well. I think he's really calm. I think a good trainer's calm in the ring. He doesn't lose his cool, you know, in between the rounds. Yeah, I, you Sign know what? Trainer. You'd, you'd probably have to say um, Josh Warrington's dad's one of the best trainers in the country. Yeah, he's done well with him, hasn't he? Yeah. And he he's has. not one of them hanging out at the back of people on IFL. No. Mick Whale, you don't see Mick Whale hanging out at the back of people. He's been a tra trainer 26 years, Mick. With Chris Smedley, they don't hang out at the back of people, do they? Martin Bowers, another very good trainer in this country. Martin Bowers is, 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 is one at top ones as well. You don't see him hanging out at the back of people, no. do you? You can't say Dave Cole was a bad trainer, but they're hanging out at the back of people, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, it, look, it's it's so hard to say who's the best trainer in the country because some of these guys will never get a shot with guys that are Matchroom or Queensbury. Yeah. Um, to be inside the... Being cult, you probably have to be 
one of these trainers like Dave Cove or others. What about Robert McCracken? Um, Frotch, I think with Frotch, right, he did a good job with Frotch. You can't knock that. But what else has he done as a pro trainer outside of Frotch? Joshua. Yeah, Joshua, but Joshua's a, in a pretty weak division. It's not well, hard it, to get Joshua there. What did Matt Rob? What did Robert McCracken do with Dave Walker? Him and oh, sure. Spencer Fear and oh yes, that fight, fight of the year, one that one year. If anybody know, wants but... to watch a good fight, it's a good tear up actually. Spencer Fear against Dave Walker YouTube. Go watch that now and let me know what you think. Answers on a postcard. Porky Corner at mail dot com. <laughs> it's a good right. fight, that. It's a good fight. Like Spencer gets stuck in, doesn't he? Uh, let's have a look. Tom Little against Babic the Savage. Uh, a, a, lot, a lot of hype around this Babic. People keep going on about this cult following, but I don't. I don't see that. I just see people like Coogan saying he's got a cult following. It's probably about forty people leaving mad comments about him. And then I heard one yesterday that he, he, he's going to the, the winner of this is going to be Babic and Little is going to be the new Dave Allen. Is that like the light-hearted entertainment of the show? Yes, I mean Tom the Little fact that we, the fact that Bean and others are hyping a grown man pretending to be um, schizophrenic, where they are the Savage and Allen, and then he plays around with them both, and then. It's meant to be funny and it's meant to be hilarious. And then you have Tom Little, who was 10 and 8 before this fight, uh, <laughs> you know, in the shape of his life and ready to fight and prove everybody wrong, who stands there in the ring for, whatever it was, it, three or four rounds and just takes punch after punch. Didn't throw a punch hardly, did he? No. I mean, he's in the shape of his life. What, what, what happened every time we hear this? Do you think Tom's blagged it? And yeah, he's likeable, I mean, look, he's likable, Tom, and capable. But do you think he blagged it, or do you think he just froze on that? Every time he gets some that likes, he seems to freeze, doesn't he? Yeah, he blagged it. I mean, look, there's one thing being in shape of your life, and there's another thing where you end up losing a lot of weight in camp. I don't know who trains Tom Little. Can you name that? No, I don't even know. He's had that many. It training. seems like his training is more about losing weight than it is actually about improving his technical ability. Has he ever shown you in any single fight in his career that you've seen or heard of that he's a fighter that's beyond area level? No, but he's a big old six foot six lump. Do you know, years ago, he, he uh, turned up at Billy Joe's camp and they had a straightener. I think Billy were about, I think Billy were in GB team then as an amateur. Billy were an amateur, and I think Tom won. They had a, they had a, it's on, on, if you Google it, Tom Little. Versus Billy Joe Son, as they got at it on a, on a, you know Gypsy style bare knuckle, yeah. and I think I think Bill won, but they got they got at it Tom and Bill. <laughs> so he's a character, and you know what? I was a Tom Little fan, but I think we like Dave Allen. It's it's become more about IFL and boxing social and getting themselves out there. I think that's more or less took over their lives rather than the dedication to training. And, and I think that's why they get these chances because they've got cult followings, haven't they? Yes. But it's wearing a bit thin now because what, what can Tom say after this now? How can he reinvent himself? What, what can he come out with? I don't know. I mean, he'll be hanging out of Uma, IFL Uma, because they mates, aren't they? So he'll be hanging up, you know, just there. There's a lot. I'd like to see him in another fight, though, Tom. I'd like to see him get another chance, maybe against Cash Alley. Yeah, not a bad fight. Oh, I'd like to see Babbage against Cash Alley or you? Nick Webb. Yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah, that's a good fight. Yeah, I'd like to see Fabio Wardley against Bab Savage, Babic Savage, or whatever it's called. Would you rate, do you rate Fabio Wardley about his fight with Latte? Because people are saying that Latte took a dive, aren't they? I thought Wardley performed well, and I, I, you know, it's not 
I don't really see you take a dive. And if somebody knocks somebody out by that man oxygen, you kind of think, really, did they take a dive? But I thought he fought quite well, and I think Wardley's improving. I don't think he will ever get to the pinnacle of the sport, but I think he'll be British level and above. Euro level, around that level. I mean, he's no worse than Derek Chisora, is he? No, Derek Chisora's really... He's he's fin- he's been finished a couple of years, and they're just holding him together with glue to rinse. They're just ringing, ringing that last bit bit out of him, aren't they? I don't even want to talk about Derek Chisora because he's, the paper they're looking to pay per view him again, aren't they? He's got ten losses. I mean, that's a record, isn't it for Sky? Isn't it? He's yeah. the most losses on getting pay per views, but he's on IFL a lot, and he does views. All right, then moving on. We spoke about Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man's tweets. Uh, did you see the the screenshots that somebody sent me and I sent you that Dave Allen says he'll fight Savage? Did you see that? Yes, I did see that. Will Dave Allen be now known? Not be known as... Will it be Dave Allen, the reappearing man, formerly known as the White Rhino, Papi Della Doncaster, Papi Della Pay-Per-View? Will Papi Della reappear in? Be making a reappearance to fight the Savage. Who knows? But that will be the shortest retirement in the history of the sport, I'd say. What would that be? A five-day retirement? Could be. It could be. Is that a record? <laughs> but he's been on Instagram every day doing these Q and As and asking people. You know, people asking questions. He's saying, "Oh, he never trained his career and he was never in shape." And yeah. you know, he would. Which you've been saying for years, right? But. He's been now airing it out. So can we take somebody like that seriously that publicly admits that they've never really trained in their life and then now we need to be excited about them fighting against another character? No, we can't. And another thing as well, it'd be Dave Allen against Babby could be a pantomime stuff, wouldn't it? Could you imagine the YouTube it going to meltdown, wouldn't it, YouTube? Two-hour two hour interviews in IFL. Oh, my God, every single day. But... As Dave Allen took the mickey out of the fans and all the people that have invested time in him, I mean, how many trainers has he had? 12 trainers? Something like that. 12 I mean, trainers. Bev, Bev would know this. 25 fights. and He's had 12 trainers in his career, and So I just think that for him to say he's not trained, oh, I didn't train, I didn't take it serious. Well, what does that say about the paying public? Or oh, what? Are we mugs? Clearly. He mugged, but would they dig him up again to fight Babbage? Of course, he would have still got his license, hasn't he? Yes. Anyway, move on. For, I don't want to talk about Dossers now. Move on. Uh, Connor Ben. Connor Ben came out and he had a little. They were, they were asking him some tough questions and he was saying, Listen, I, I beat these fools in training. I drive a Ranger over with heated seats. So, <laughs> what do you think he shot himself in foot there? I mean, he always seems to be talking about wealth and material things every time Conor Ben seems to be in an interview, a bit like his dad. Do you feel that that's in bad taste? Oh, you know what? He's earned it, right? He's earned the money, so yeah. I can't... I, personally, I can't complain. I can see why people get upset, but, you know, he's just trying to make a point, and he's earned the money, and I guess he should be proud about that. That fact. And I, I like the interview. I like the fact that he was raw. He wasn't trying to spend the narrative. He, he said, you know, we do give fighters criticism for being too humble and, you know, too humble all the time. So he said what was on his mind. He was quite emotional and raw. And I think the criticism has probably got to him a bit. And, you know, I, I prefer an interview like that than be, you know, be hungry, be humble stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be humble, stay hungry and all that, Joshua. Yeah, but well, that's most that. fighters, isn't it? I was like, oh, they're such a quiet and humble guy. I don't think he's he is what he is, and he's not pretending to be something else. I quite like him. Yeah, uh, Johnny Nelson. Every time Conor Ben fights, and we've I've dug it up a couple of a couple of his episodes here on Sky, Johnny. Good old Johnny Nelson, the company man. Every time Conor Ben fights, uh, Johnny Nelson reminds us that. He fought on a Nigel Ben undercard at uh, Finn's, you know, the Watson Ben. Yeah. He fought on undercard. And, uh, hmm. 
Why is he doing that? Is it be, is it because he wants to remind us that he's an ex boxer? Because when he fought Carl Thompson, it was the worst stoppage ever in the world. Yeah, it was awful. At the time, you, you, have you seen it? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it before the clips, and then you sent it to me this morning. Well, you know that's the Russian version because the British version they don't they don't. The, Rock Frank Warren's got the rights. If anybody can find the British version. Uh, Johnny Nelson against Carl Thompson for the WBO cruiserweight belt. Put it on social media because apparently it's it's shelved, and that will be because it was the referee's first title fight, and there were all sorts of legal arguments going on after it. And Nelson never got his belt, did he, till 2016 as well, or 2015? Yeah. So, so it took him 16 years to give him the belt for that. 16 year. But if that's his best win, Carl Thompson, what's his second best win? Because he had all them defences, didn't he, over seven and a half year? You know what? I can tell you. He saw at that point the cruiserweight cruiserweight division was quite new, and there weren't the fighters in it. And yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to say. He's one of these guys that had a, had a long title reign, but you just don't remember anything from their career. He's a bit like Sven Otka, isn't he? Yeah, he's a Sven Otka. Remember Sven Otka's who yeah, he should have lost Robbie against. Reed. Yeah, who he, who he should have lost against, but you don't actually remember the win. Should have lost against Glenn Johnson and Byron Mitchell as well. Uh, I think that's about it, Rico. Uh, Let's uh, talk about that one guy, right? So WBA. Oh yeah, the WBA guy. Let's finish off on him. Yeah, so Connor Ben has just beat the guy ranked fifteenth, right? And he were dog shit, so fair enough. So he's beat him on points. I said it got to points for Connor Ben, but I said the guy get jobs. But I thought Connor Ben clearly won, so well done, Connor Ben. You can only beat who's in front of you, but he's a protective fighter. There's a guy ranked in the WBO, WBA. He's ranked number three, and he's had two fights. Am I right? Yeah, Gabriel Maestera, who was a decent amateur. 34 years old, Venezuelan, never fought outside of Venezuela, got two wins, 2-0, two, and oh, two knockouts, and he's ranked number three in the WBA. And Manny Pacquiao is a champion. Yeah. So is he that could... the... oh. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao is a champion, and Yugas is the sort of regular champion. So this guy with two pro fights could be a voluntary for Manny Pacquiao in a big money fight, or... Connor Ben, who's now beat the guy ranked 15, could be technically a voluntary for Manny Pacquiao. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, it could be. And also, if he beats this guy that's 2 0, he could um, be in the top three in the world three. rankings. He could be ranked number three, Connor Ben, then, yeah? Yeah. Who's, not ranked, who's ranked number one? Uh, well, depends how you look at Yugas. Um, the guy that's trained by Ismail Salas, the Cuban guy, he's got the regular belt, but number one is Jamal James, an American guy. Then he's got Mikey Garcia. But the WBA is the weakest of all divisions when it comes to... It's multiple. weaker than IBO now, isn't it, for rankings, WBA, in it, I think, do you? Yeah, it depends on the weight class, but yeah, definitely a waterweight. You know, you don't have the likes of Sean Porter, you don't have Danny Garcia, you don't have Virgil Ortiz... You don't have Jerome Ennis. You don't have any of these Errol Spence, Crawford. You don't have any of these good guys in the rankings for the WBA. It's not good, mate. It's not good at all. I'm not no. happy. But I've enjoyed having you on. I've got Terry on now. What I'll do then, I'll upload, upload them at 12, 1 o'clock, and I'll put you both together like I did last week. <laughs> oh, I suppose it's a pass. You want me to split you apart? Yeah, do mine on uh, Monday. You want me to do yours on Monday? Okay. Yeah, do it on Monday afternoon or something so people can watch more both of stuff so we're not competing, giving all the fans more time to watch and, you know, you'll cover different stuff with Big Terry. All right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on, Rico. It's been a pleasure. I hope you have a good Sunday. What you got planned? Uh, I was meant to go and play some football with mates today, but trains aren't running. So imagine paying all this money for train tickets in London. Trains don't run when there's a pandemic. So here we go. You get a refund, won't you? I, you know, I cancelled my ticket ages ago. Good man. All right, then, well, listen, you take care and thanks. Yeah, for don't have any nightmares, mate, all right? Keep my lines.
<laughs> and, uh, and get some of that bean powder in you. You might become a company man. <laughs> All right. See you, pal. All right. Cheers. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye. Bye, Mike. Bye. Well, that were Rico, my good friend from Finland, lives in London. I'm going to get Terry on now. So in another hour, I'll be able to watch my film. Today's film, Richard Burton, 1971, Villain. Seen it about 10 times. I just feel like watching it. I like stuff like that. So, all right. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. We'll put this one out Monday to please Rico.